All right, really quick, I want to show you this radio that I picked up a few months ago um, at a local ham fair, and this is a an, I, an ICOM 2710. I don't know when it was manufactured, but I'm guessing it was probably in the late 90s. And so there's some unique things about it. Most ICOMs, a lot of people, well, some people don't know, but this is a, a dual band, dual receive. So it can receive, basically you have two radios. You see this is symmetrical. So the controls over here, control this side, and the controls over here, I'm get my hand out of the way, control this side of the radio, okay? Um, and these are in memory mode right now. So you can, you can obviously do VFO and, and direct input. The reason I got this radio is because I, I do like the dual band, uh, dual receive feature. And if you, if you contact ICOM, which this is an old radio, so you can just go online and find it, but most ICOM radios, if they're dual band, dual receive, they will do cross band repeat. And I'm gonna kind of show you how that works today. Um, the reason I have this out here with a little stubby antenna on it is because it's set up um, for short range. So the way cross band repeat works is on this side, and it's gotta be, um, I believe on this radio, it's pretty specific. It's gotta be VHF on this side and UHF on this side. Uh, so it's important, so you set your you set your main channel on that one and you can set whatever repeater i'm going to set it on the call free the, the national call frequency which i have it programmed in 146.520 um i have it on low power you have your low power control here so your main band that's your main band that's what you want to be using so i've chosen um, because of our local band plan 446.425 i put a tone in there that's set on 1a which is kind of my priority channel so it's already set up to go um, in the memory, so it's real easy to set up. And then, of course, I have it on my radio right here. So basically the same frequency. Well, let me turn this on so you can see it easier. But oh, let's do that. 446.425. So that's what I've chosen, at least this time. I can change that. There's a whole bunch of frequencies you can use, no problem. So that's set up a low power, stubby antenna. So the way this works is if you have this in your car or right now it's set up as a base unit, if I wanna take this radio and walk around the neighborhood, probably get, I don't know, half a mile, mile away, and I can still use this radio as an amplifier to go out onto this frequency. So if I'm in a hole, if I'm in a hole and set up at a, at a trailhead and I want to extend the range of my little HT here, I can use crossband repeat to do that, up to 50 watts out with the power of this radio. Now. Let me show you how to do that real quick, and then I'm gonna go into something else that's probably not um, on here. So you have to go main, and then you, on this one you have to hold down here, turns it into a subband. Then to turn this one, the 27A, into crossband repeat, you hold down these all at the same time until those go to uh, a, a locking, you know, it locks and it flashes. So that means you're in crossband mode right now. So the interesting thing about this particular radio is that the previous owners installed a chip in it that's a DTMF tone encoder, um, which along with crossband repeat, gives me remote control access of this radio. And I'm gonna see if I can demonstrate that right now. Um, this little module in here gives me the ability to take this little HT and walk away from the car, leave it in kind of, um, you know, it's a resting mode. It'll receive, but it won't transmit anything. It's not in crossband repeat. You know, you can dim down the LEDs to save power. So if you have this in your car, you won't be using, it'll only be receiving. It won't be transmitting, you know, high power on anything. So theoretically, you're saving your battery in your car until you need it. Now, let's say you want to, you're on the trail and you want to access the repeater or a frequency that you've designated when you first pulled up into the parking lot, you can now, punch in a series of tones and turn this crossband repeater on. And I'm gonna show you how to do that right now and show you kind of what that looks like. And then of course you can punch in a series of tones, turn it off. I don't like to do that because, you know, it puts out the, the, a bunch of tone sounds on the, you know, on the either the repeater or the simplex frequency that you're going into. It's just disruptive. So I look at it as, hey, it's kind of an emergency measure. You know, you know you can probably get a signal back to your car at the trailhead a couple miles in with your little radio get a call out and then you know if, if you're doing that you're, you're probably not you know, it's more of an emergency situation anyways and yeah you could call and radio in and say hey listen I'm gonna turn off my crossband repeater I'm gonna put a few tones into the radio 
and then I'll be done. And that's fine. And you know, a lot of people access, you know, IRLP or echo link nodes that way. So it's pretty common even to hear that on, on repeaters, but um, I'll show you how to do that. Um, and I'm going to, I'm going to see if I can pull up these tones or these, these codes and see if I can turn this on and demonstrate that. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is instead of holding these buttons down and going into cross band repeat mode, I'm gonna turn on cross band repeat mode remotely. So this is not connected any, in any way. I could walk away probably a mile or two away from this radio and then turn on cross band repeat mode. Um, now we're gonna turn X band on and we're gonna attempt to do this. KF7JSM turning on cross band repeat, experimenting. So now I'm gonna try to try to turn this on with my DTMF pad here. Okay. Here we go. I'm not going to show you the code. Did you see what just happened? Those are flashing. It's locked out like we showed you before and I did not touch anything on there. So now we're going to we're going to call up uh, and demonstrate cross band repeat. And so I'm going to use this radio to access that side of the radio. That could, that's a simplex frequency right now. It could be any repeater you have prog programmed in. KF7JSM testing crossband repeat mode. So that's my demonstration. Um, there's a few other features that this radio will do. Um, if you see one of these ICOM 2710s or this vintage radio, I don't, I don't really see any problem with them. Um, I know that they had some issues. Uh, overheating the finals. Um, I know they're repairable. See that just turned off. I know they are repairable and serviceable. They seem to be pretty pretty bomb proof. Um, it's a big chunky radio, a lot of cooling, a big old fan in the back. Um, I haven't had any problems with mine so far on 70 centimeters and two meters. Um, the only thing I would say that they don't do, and I didn't know ahead of time when I bought it, they don't do digital tones. So if you have a lot of repeaters around your area with DCS or digital tones, they will not do that. Um, and it will not do alpha tagging. So you have these, you know, you have to memorize your your frequencies. You've got you've got to know what you're what you're doing with that. Um, so for me, like this is great for local use because I have a few of my favorite repeaters and frequencies memorized, and I don't have it loaded up. Whereas the I the um, Yesu 8900 does alpha tagging, and that's a great travel radio because you can program that up on the computer, get everything set the way you want, and then go on your trip. And you'll even if you don't know all the frequencies where you're going, you'll see, hey, this is you know a, a repeater in this area. Makes it easy. But this one is a little more old school, and for what I want it to do, it's fine. It works great. I've got great signal reports from this radio, actually, very clear uh, signal reports, and uh, so I'm pretty happy with it. So let's hop on here and see if we can't uh, get anybody out on the uh, call frequency. Kilo Foxtrot Seven Juliet Sierra Mike, uh, testing out crossband repeat mode on the call frequency. Is anyone around for a quick contact? I'm doing a YouTube video. Let's see if anybody comes back. KG7OEM, this is Kilo Foxtrot 7, Juliet Sierra Mike. I'm just doing a quick YouTube video to demonstrate cross band repeat on this uh, little icon that I have here. You're coming through loud and clear. Yeah, absolutely. It's Kilo Foxtrot 7, Juliet Sierra Mike. Um, you're coming in 5-9, um, perfect copy. Uh, tone is good. I would say that is working swimmingly well for you. Great, yeah, thanks for the comeback. Um, I'm using this uh, ICOM 2710. It's an old radio, and I've kind of gotten familiar with it a little bit more, and it has a remote uh, feature where I can, I can kind of leave it in idle, and then I can turn it on. Uh, if I'm away from the radio. And I can turn it off. I, I don't like to do that because it puts a bunch of DTMF tones out, but it'd probably be kind of annoying. But it's kind of cool because you can turn it on remotely. Oh, that is very cool. Does it just sit there and listen for, uh, for the command to turn on, the, like a DTMF tone? Yeah, that's correct. So I have to write, you know, it's kind of a long string of commands. That's why I don't like to turn it off uh, remotely. But uh, it, yeah, you have to put in about, I don't know, eight characters with a passcode, and then you can turn it on uh, when you're away from it. So if you leave it in your car, you could be hiking and then switch it on, and you don't have to, you know, it doesn't have to be running the whole time. It could just be listening. Oh, that is a terrific feature. That's 
sounds really cool. And do you, do you mind being on a YouTube video talking about this stuff for a couple seconds? Oh, right on. Well, we got uh, double whammy here, so that's great. Um, and you're coming through 100% over here, 5.9, no problem. Um, really good. Um, well, we're going to shut it down here. I think I'm going to turn off the, well, maybe I'll just monitor it for a little bit. But, uh, yeah, it should be kind of a fun video. And it's an old radio, but, uh, you know, they still work. seems like it still works fine. So I think it's still relevant for today. Yeah, I'll for sure do that. Um, I will. Um, I'll leave a link in there and uh, put it as a text uh, right over this video. Sh that shouldn't be a problem. And I'll, I'll go to your QRZ page and um, I'll leave you a message. How's that sound? Oh, that sounds terrific. Um, my email is set up on QRZ. I would love to have a link to the YouTube video when you publish it. That's very cool. Thank you. Um, very cool for making the YouTube video. I hope uh, your audience enjoys it. And I'll let you go back to doing your thing. Um, this is KG7 OEM. Have a terrific day. Yeah, for sure. 7-3, Tyler. KG7 OEM, KF7 JSM. I'll be clear. Uh, well, I'm going to go onto his page and see if we can, and I'll send him the link to the video. But uh, Tyler, it was nice making contact with you um, live like that. Again, this is unscripted. That, that part was unscripted. So um, pretty cool community. Um, that's about all I have for today. I hope you guys are doing well um, in the new year here, and I will be seeing you on the next one.